Hello, is it my gadget you're looking for? Hi, welcome back to Gadget Mad Lad. Just been a bit weird as usual, you know me. Uh, right, so this one is interesting. Right, I'm not 100% sure this is going to work, I'm not going to lie to you. I've done a little trial run today and what I'm prepared to do to see if it does work. Right, so, getting ahead of myself already. <laughs> Right, so what I've done, this is off a DS Lite, this little ribbon cable there. The screen was smashed. So what I did, I went across the pins, and I these two bits here are where the, um, what's it called? The backlight to the top, top screen connected to the ribbon cable. So what I did, with my multimeter, I checked them with, for continuity against all these pins there, and I think, if I'm not mistaken, from the... From the right side, it is, I think, the fourth pin in and the fifth pin in. Them two together are what I'm assuming is the whole, you know what, the 330 ohm resistor that you need to put in to make it think the light's, the light's there. Well, if I'm not, I'm not mistaken, this would entail, like example, say I sent it to somebody who's got a DS light and they stuck it straight in and sort of tucked it away inside, made a macro. It would literally turn on it, it would work perfectly. But then I thought to myself, okay, there's no speakers in that, because the, the speaker bit was damaged, you see. So what I did, I checked on another one I've got, and it turned out it had continuity. That's the, that's where it, it connects today, essentially. So that means with this ribbon cable on the DSi, the DS Lite, I've not checked it on the original DS yet, so I, don't, I can't confirm, obviously, it's even possible because I've not checked the obviously for continuity, but what I've done with the DS um the DSI one. And I was gonna test that one, but then I thought actually what I'll do, I'll check this, the DSI, because I've actually got a DSI that's quite tricky to mod. I've got one open here one second. Uh this is the insides of a the main motherboard of a DSI, yeah. Ignore that tape, it's just from where I did like a little modification but didn't work. Um but the point is this bit on sexy looking If you look, get a screwdriver, that light is terrible. Let's focus. Here, you need to solder a wire from there, that tiny little leg, um, to a 330 ohm resistor, the big variety like that, or the really small variety like them in there. If you can see, the tiny, tiny little things. Try and get a close up. That's how my 330 ohm SMD resistors are fuses, whatever you call them. And the point is, it goes from this connection here all the way around to the front of the board. So I think it's there. Obviously, I'll see on this when I crack it open. But so my thought was move this back to one side for a second with this screen here. Is we'll tear the screen down, I'll take out the backlight. Because at the moment you can't detach it from the back without sort of like disassembling the screen itself, if you get what I mean. So it's going to be a pain in the butt. So what I figured I'd do, I'm going to mark on the cable there where the black and red go. Because my intention is to keep the speaker connections as well. So hopefully I can use that as my connector for the inside, if you get what I mean. So for now we'll just move this out of the way. We'll be tearing that down in a minute. Um, right, so I'm going to do this. So we'll get red sharpie. Mark one side red and that'll do me. Because both sides are red, both sides are black. Easy peasy. So to make this a little bit easier for me, I'm gonna attach these speakers. Just put the top of it and that should do the trick. Come off you. Yeah, that's one. And they want the magnetically stuck together as you can see, pain in the butt. Get that off there, get that off there. Obviously we need to not, if there's a rip in the cable, it might not work, but you only need the far side of it from what I could tell. I can't remember which side it was though, to be honest with you, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> I've got a multimeter to hand, so if we need to check, we can check. Right, so, intention now is to tear this apart, which isn't too much of an easy, Task to do, but I've got a little flat screwdriver somewhere. Bear in mind, the screen's broke. This is what I was actually using for my um, test screen for my, um, you know, any broken DSIs that I got. 
but I didn't come across too many, so I didn't end up using it that, that often, really, so... And this struck me as quite interesting, because how hard it is to do the soldering on that is really bad. Whereas this, if you can tear down the screen without damaging the cable, that's the most challenging part about it, in my mind, anyway. And that's even if it even works. <laughs> I'm confident, though. I think I know what I'm ta I, I say I know what I'm talking about and then I'll do stuff and mess it up, but logically it seems like it could. For example, where the two connectors for the, essentially, you know, the backlight, it's got two connectors to the ribbon cable. I would assume that's a positive and negative connection, yeah? To give it, obviously, a positive and negative charge or whatever you call it, you get me? So by me shorting them two together with a 330 ohm resistor, when it goes to do its boot up check, it will assume that the top light is connected and continue to boot up and let you use it in, in the macro kind of way, you get me? So that's my hope, but I could be wrong, like I said. So if we look here on this ribbon cable there, we've got four silver dots there, they're for your speaker connections, you've got your red connections on this side and you've got your black connections on that side. We're going to, if you, if you get, they get mixed up, there's no major damage you can do, but it's better to sort it out if you get what I mean. Anyway, so if you look here, see the, am I showing you correctly? Right, so if you look here, you can see there's like lines coming out where my fingernail is. Well, they go to two little, you know, it's silver to you. See the reflective things there, them two dots? Well, that's where this ribbon cable is soldered to this ribbon cable, which if you look on this side, you should be able to clearly see. So if I run a solder iron over that, that should detach. That's the plan anyway, but I think I might have to totally disassemble the screen to get to that point, you know, to loosen the actual LEDs themselves. I had a totally messed up one before, you know, that the ribbon cable was uh, all torn on, and that was like my practice run, you know, before the end of the video. Sorry if I'm boring you to death with this. Just trying not to. Because if it rips out and it pulls them LEDs off, then that's not good. Come on. Don't embarrass me like this screen. Come on, man. I thought we were good, man. I am going to start edit, edit my videos soon, but the the reason why I didn't edit my videos, well, I've not, why, why I've not started to edit them to this point was because I thought it's an interesting concept of, you know, in real time, because most people do edit the videos. If you watch one of my videos, however much time it's taken me in that video is the time it'll take you. Probably maximum to be honest, you probably do it quicker. But, oh crap. I think there's a bit of plastic in there, alright. I totally messed the screen up here, but it was totally buggered anyway. Had a big crack on the bottom of it, just about make out what was on it. Right, so here, if you look there, you can see, see this little ribbon thing on the other side? This is the LED, so what we need to do is try and remove the polarizer and stuff. Because it, it tends to stick to one of these layers. So the trick is to not yank it in the process. It's usually the thicker one, there we go. That one there, so... Make sure you push it from the right side and start from the bottom bit here because that's the most vulnerable spot I would have thought. Just lightly pull it away. Take up the tension, lightly pull it away. Tension. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Lightly pull it away. Lightly pull it away. Lightly pull it away. Right. That isn't actually that important, ironically enough. It's the bit that it's connected to on the board that we want because we're going to be cutting this in a second with some scissors. Scary things and all, but... It all makes sense in a minute. Hopefully this actually works. I'm so, so hoping this works because I thought to myself, oh my God, no way, I've, I've discovered something else in there because it's so bleeding hard to do the mod. You know, the salt, getting that soldering in place is, and that leg and that little black chip is, oh my God, so bad. It took me at least like 20 attempts the first time I did it, I think. So I thought I could maybe make some people's lives a little bit easier by... Making, discovering it, there is a new way, a better way. Use the force here. Alright, so, like, right, 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 right. So let's move this crap out of the way. Uh, let's move this out of the way for one second so I can get my little homemade poor man's helping hands. Where are they? Here we go. So we'll deal with it. Is that going to work? Mm hmm. I need to hold it on, so you'll do the trick. Alright, there we go. So tweezers, uh, tweezers, blur. I am so not saying the right words today. 
some of brain fart days. This one you all had them. And so now what we're going to do is remove the LED from the ribbon. And so this isn't technically soldering, this is desoldering. You don't need to like use any braid or, uh, what do you call it, um, flux or anything. I don't think you do. What I just do is apply a little bit of heat. And jobs are good in. It's popped off. And we've got two beautiful pads there, which we can now tin. Oh, we'll, we'll, what we'll do, we'll get it, we'll get it cut off first, because that's what we need to do now. We'll trim it, make it smaller so it's less pain in the butt. Because now is where the modding comes in. That can be used for another mod at another time. Backlight always comes in handy. Uh, if you wonder what this is, this is, um, if you watch the technically tear down, I can't remember which one it was, but the one where I tore down the speaker, the loud speaker, you know, the eight ball speaker thing that I got, um, tore it down, there's the, maybe that'll ring a bell to you, it's one of them kind of things, that's half of it that's left in me, but it's up anyway. <laughs> that's um, got a battery out of the Geotech PS4 power controller grip thing that I did a tear down on, that's this, and this is an iPhone 5S loudspeaker thing in above. And as I say, it sounds so good. This is I'm not this, necessarily this battery, but I'm probably going to be going with this and this. I'll give you a little test te tester before I, you know, do the tear down of the macro, so you can hear what it sounds like. It sounds really good. Uh, right. So it, what we need to do here, if you look on this cable there, essentially where the back of it pins up like that, that's where it would have been, yeah. So we're now free. Well, the bit we want is anyway. So scissors are where the scissors. Here we go. So what I wanted to do, I figured the best way to do it was just to cut as straight on this line as you possibly can because that's going to make it easier to tidy up you know, when it comes to the long run of it. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to cleanly snip across there. It's mainly just ground plane from what I can see. So I'm not like going to be shot anything major league there or anything. Nothing that's going to bother us anyway. So that's the rubbish now. That's junk. Um, this is the bit we need. This is the bit now that with a little bit of solder into this, you should in turn be able to plug this into the bottom half of a DSi without the top screen being connected and it should in turn give you um, the ability to turn it on and if you connect solder to these connections there you've got the ability to maybe put two speakers in there as well which if you'd have to probably remove the game cart at some point to do so but it would definitely be possible I thought in fact I'm going to do it so let's get it done soon alright Gonna bring in this little crappy phone for a future teardown video. <laughs> gonna prop, build me a little prop for now. Uh, my cigarette keeps going out. Don't smoke, kids. Right, so let's get this done. Right, what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna lightly tin the um, pads so they've got a nice blob of solder on each of them. It makes it easier for the little SMD um, resistor to. I'll fuse whatever you want to call it to um, stick, you know, properly. I need something to pin that down with, don't I? Uh, one second, I forgot. What I'll wait, what way is enough? Hmm, yeah, that'll probably work. A little battery from the, um, the nearer phones that I told now. This battery's been used in so many things. It's modded a PSP, which I think was one of the best battery mods ever, seriously. That was such a cool video, one of my favourites. Yeah, uh, obviously, if you're a fan of the channel, comment below what your favourite video I've done here is, and I'll try and do future videos in regards to some subjects to do with that, because I've got, at the moment with the macro, I'm, like, just scra scraping the surface. So, as I say, there's plenty to come. Down there, you. Lovely jubbly. Oh crap, that's bridged. Oh, we're good there. Two nice little bang tidy blobs. Lovely jabbly. That's what I like to see. Yeah, so um, my favourite video is probably the Game Boy Macro Flip Flop or the... What did I say it was then? As I saying it then, I'm getting a brain fart again. Hmm. The um, PSP battery mod. Sorry, ultimate PSP battery mod. Technically not the ultimate one, because it could be done better with USB-C. That would be better. 
Right, so anyway, I'm going on myself, back to this subject that we're on now, this video here and now. <laughs> so I've tinned these two pads here, which is where the light was, the top, the sorry, the back light for the top screen was connecting via this ribbon cable here to the, um, what do you call it, the bottom motherboard thing. So now, I'll dig deep in here, I've got one ready specifically for this one, because it's the perfect size. And that's... They're all tiny ones. This is one of my slightly bigger versions of it. A 331 resistor. I actually scavenged these from um, old Android boxes and like routers and stuff like that. So well, you can see that or not, but that's goddamn tiny. It's like a grain of a grain of rice. Not even that. It's like half a grain. Of, it's like a grain of rice sliced in half. That's what it's like. Right, so now I need to maneuver this correctly so I can put this in place and solder it in. I don't matter which way it goes, and I think it's like multi volt, multi, multi flow, <laughs> amp flow. I don't know, whatever. You get me? Uh, so I'll move that one out of the way again because we don't need that today. Uh, let's get this out of here. And I think I should just be able to spread this really on it, and that should do the trick, I reckon. So let's get that done. And you come back in, battery. I think you are. Let's get you in there. Right, something to weigh you down as well. What can I use? Um, my pliers will do. Get off you. Oh, crap. Dropping everything here. Right, so I'm just going to put that there to weigh that down. It's not going to cause any shots or anything like that, any damage. Nothing's connected to any voltage or anything right now, so we're all safe. Um, right, so. Oh, crap. Where's I put that little resistor? There it is. Now I lost that. Tiny little things, man. So let's get that. Where the tweezers? Oh, crap. Back in them again. <laughs> Uh, let's get it flipped the right way around. The right way around, that bugger. Oh, god damn it. Right way around, god damn it. Let's pull that down, we'll get this in place. <laughs> Got me solder iron one hand ready to go. Oh, god damn it. Right, so. You can go like that. I'm sorry if I can't, like, show you right now, because this is some tiny, tiny soldering. But with that little beauty there, that's the only soldering you will need to do, other than the speakers if you want to add them, obviously, but that's optional if you use headphones. So I'm going to have to come in closer there. Hope you get a good shot of this. If you can't, I'm truly sorry. I need to get better at editing, obviously. <laughs> oh, God damn it. Go right away, you. Oh, God damn it. No, don't turn the wrong way around. Right, so, yeah. So turn it sideways. Oh, God damn it. Oh, bugger. Oh, it's so hard not to swear when this is so irritating. Oh, God damn it. Oh, God damn it. Oh, no. Again. All right, one second, one second, one second. Think, 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 think. I know what I'll do, I know what I'll do. I'm sorry about this, wasting time and everything, but that is so frustrating. I'm gonna, I'm gonna let a swear slip if I don't do this. <laughs> That's not good. So for now, let's just get a bit of solid tape and tape the bagger down. That'll do the trick. So I will bring, because I can bring up a little bit more then as well. Yeah, it's a good idea. Good thinking, Chris. Hey, can I have good thoughts every now and again. I still need that battery now, I don't think. So, leave you out there as well. Oh crap, where's the... There it is. I keep forgetting all that tiny little thing. So small, man. Alright, so I'll put you on there. Let's get you in place. So, about... There, I'll do the trick. So, cell tape it into place. Just hold it, hopefully. Oh, you check that out. That's awesome, man. That is good. And I literally picked that up and threw it away. <laughs> that gets it nice and stuck down proper. And hopefully you can see it a bit clearer now as well. Oh, the tricky bugger thing is now is there. Oh, I'm right into place then. Now I'm going to put my tweezers. <laughs> God damn tweezers. There, hiding. All well, the hiding is right in front of me. <laughs> so. Fingers crossed now. A little bit of fid fidgety pokery. Yeah, if I angle it right, 
I can just hold it in place, that'll just be easier. There we go. About a million times easier. Tap that side, that's in. Come around to this side, which again, pin the butt. But if you want to get the angle right, you're going to do, aren't you? So I'll clutch that, and I'll do all retouch the other side as well, just to make sure it's stuck. Yeah, it seems good. So, by my pawns now, this is the mob essentially, this is it. I'm sorry, I get that was a bit of faffing about there, but if you try faffing about to actually do the mod I'm about to undo in a second, you'll not. Oh, don't say that's melted to that. Don't say that's melted to that. Holy crap. Why are they shine? Oh crap, I'm gonna shine. Give me a second. Yeah, I'll have to do. If it doesn't work, that might be the reason why. Oh, the fact that it doesn't work. <laughs> That's a possibility too, I suppose. Let's just go with blame the smudge shoulder, yeah? Keep it between me, you don't tell anyone. <laughs> Alright, so now we need to crack this open. Uh, right, right, what I'll do actually before I crack it open, the, as promised, the iPhone speaker demonstration I was talking about. So, excuse the mess of it as well, I've not cleaned it since last the video. <laughs> I actually played it really, so I'm to charge it up for this. Oh, we turn it on, don't I? That'd help. Oh, Chris, come on, man, get it together. There we go. Right, so give it a press. Are you hearing that? Sounds good, doesn't it? I'll click into a game so you can actually hear it. Mario for whatever it is. The one I legally own, so you there's no copyright protection or anything, hopefully. Um ROMs GBA Super Mario Runs 4, let's give it a go. Now listen to this. Well, to be fair, it is outside the actual housing of it, so that's going to make it amplify a little bit. But that's a beast, isn't it? No distortion, sounds lovely, man. This is a really good one to do it with. And in case you're wondering, that's what it sounds like. Full blast, I think. Yeah, full blast is a front facing speaker and a rear facing speaker. And that's that. That's it exactly. Very, very quiet. Right, so I'll turn this off. Turn this off. Because again, that's for another video, another mod. But again, we'll probably have to use it at the end of this because I'm going to be taking out the speakers. Not that there's re relevance to that. This helps me for a future video after this. Alright, so let's get the thing taken apart and then thrown back together again. With, well, pass the thrown together so you can see the mod work. So I'm going to undo the mod that I've done already. It's got full juiced up and stuff, so we're all good. Um, and obviously I'm going to attach the, that to the, where the top screen would connect and you'll see that, hopefully, fingers crossed, it's all good in the hood and we're good to go. Are they crossheads? I think they're crossheads. Yeah, they're all crossheads. <sighs> Pain in the bit. Right, so everything's goes in there, so I've got a little screw pot there, that'll have to do for me for now. So I've got something better. I can always track of these screws, you see. The magnifying glass, that'll do. So, let's get them in there. Actually, there's one thing I forgot to do, which will probably mess up if I don't do it. <laughs> Mr. Forgetful and all that. Memory card. That's going to cause trouble if I don't. That can just go in there for now, so that uh, this can be closed. I'm going to get back to tearing it down. Right, so that's them two screws here. Yeah, so this one. So 
obviously probably should have planned a bit more ahead than this, but not exactly one for pre-thinking if you get me. <laughs> this well needs redoing again, this housing on it. I'm thinking I'm gonna look something camel maybe, trying to do a camel pattern on it. So the, yeah, the, uh, I can't decide whether it's gonna be this one or the, I've got an original DS that I'm currently doing a bit of work on as well. And it's between this one and that one, where which one gets that speaker mod, you know, the iPhone 5S one. So if you've got a preference, which one you'd like to see me use that in, let me know and I'll see if I can oblige. Can't make any promises like, but if I do, I do. Right, so, um, flat screwdriver. Right, so now I've removed all the screws. I think it's just like force. Yeah, there we go. There's a connection somewhere from what I can recall that needs to be disconnected or something. Oh, bugger. So I'm using metal. I'm going to use a pry tool to it. Don't want to be damaging this too much. Gives me more crap. I not made a horrible crunch. It's never a good noise, that is it? Am I forgetting a screw or something? No, they're all out of there. So why ain't you opening? Something stopping you. Maybe it's down there. I think the paint's kind of, you know, made it cling together a bit. Oh, crap. Yeah, I think we're good now. It's done the trick, I think. Something that's gripping it though. The hell is gripping you? Oh, there we go. So is that disconnected? Yeah, it's disconnected. So this is the thing I was talking about. It's only put on put pulled, so it's no big deal. Alright, so as you can see all the fidgety poker inside there. That's what I'm hoping this is gonna be like clear. So we don't need to come back to this for anything right now. That's good put to the side. And here we've got a digitizer camera connector for the top screen and the back of that this board here is where that would connect to that you get me right, is there a way i could get it in from this angle because i've like about a million times easier on it <laughs> i doubt that's gonna be the case no nah, i couldn't because anyway, obviously it wouldn't prove it working would it because obviously i've got my mod on her so right let's detach these first of all come up you don't snap on me. Uh, tweezers probably best job for that. So right now I was gently pulling out the cables for the, um, I think that's the buttons. Maybe are the D-pad. Yeah, it'll be the D-pad, won't it? To figure out which orientation it was in my mind. All right, so I've got that dis disconnected. And I always recommend, see these hinges are qu quite delicate, so Probably push them down when you're done. They're delicately light though. Because you put on too much pressure on it, you will snap it. And let's see if that goes. Ugh. I don't know if you've watched one of Mako's recent videos where he messed up with the soldering on the connector, but as I say, you don't want to be getting involved with one of these. Hell no. Scary stuff, man. Enough to give solders nightmares. Right, uh, so I think that's disconnects. Yeah, that's disconnects. You see, I've got all the wires routed everywhere. It's kind of like spaghetti junction in there. <laughs> I don't actually know if you need this to connect. Re, re, you know, like on um, the DS Lite, you need it. It's got the the, um, the BIOS on it. You might actually not even need it for this because it's not like it's got Wi-Fi connected or anything. So anyway, so enough chit chat. Let's get back to nitty gritty. Listen to the boy from the big bad city. This is jam hot. This is jam hot. Tune. I've got a little bit of glue going over the things to try and hold it in place. The little fragile, what do you call it, wire. <laughs> Lose the ability to speak. Don't pull that off there, you. Oh, it's chipped a bit of the plastic off, isn't it? And there's the glue. Is it gonna come off easily? We don't want any trouble for you, mate. You know me, Dan, you ain't coming in. Right, so put a little snack glob in the rubbish pot next to me. And now we can start removing stuff, I think. 
Uh, just doing a safe side, let's get this tape mitt lifted because I don't want to yank too hard and rip a pad up. Just in case this idea doesn't work and I need to come back to redoing this. <laughs> Which if I do, I will do a video on it. And hopefully we'll get zoomed in real close and I'll show you how to... Well, I don't know if you can see that or not. I'll try and give you a little close-up, but that's the leg I was talking about before. You know, on that board, on this board, on, this is the side with the screen on, so it will be that way around. So, from that orientation, if you look to this connector here, that's where this is soldered. Which I can now give you a little close-up of, hopefully. Is that picking it up too well? Can you see? Can you see it? Can you see? I have seen the light and exercised the demons. This house is clear. This macro is not clear. Right, so what I will do, I'm going to quickly just untap that one. And I'll show you the other side where it's connected as well, because I have to untap that too. So a quick touch of that. Come off you. Come off you. No, I'm done. You never even know I was there. You know, clearly mashed up this housing, so there's no going back for this one. Uh, ready? Oh, so... Got a ground connection there from the game cart that I removed. That's what I'm saying to you, if you remove the game cart, you have the, it's quite a big bit of space you've got there to work with, you know what I mean? So, intrigued or not, that's actually... I think I'm... Yeah, I've got the other one going to that as well, you know, in the front. They're all twisted together and going to the same ground pad. I'm assuming that's maybe, that's maybe the case. Could be wrong. Uh, let's get that desoldered. Let's take a second. Yeah, lovely jibbly. And that can be pulled up because these ones are out of a what are they out of um, a new two DS I think. The two speaker, you know, I got that's a both of them out of it. I'll put that to one. Two. Put that in that speaker from there down. Uh, then I can have a go from there then. So let me just sold it in a second so I can dig away undo me marvelous job and all. Pull, but not pull too hard, you get me? Hmm. Right, so that's going around to that. That's trapped in there. That means that I must be able to pull you then. Don't pull any resistors or capacitors up, you bugger. This glue is rock hard when it dries, I tell you. It's going to like angle it around the board, you know, so it like kind of zigzag it into place. It's that normal wire that I use. But it's really good stuff, but I mean, it's not like I borrowed all anything that would cause resistance or interference, you know I mean? So it's kind of like the most direct way I could go, but like <laughs> indirect as hell. Um, right, so enough chit chat for that for the time being. I've loosened what I can loosen. We now need to remove this part of the board to gain access to the other side of the board, obviously. Duh. Uh, right, so. These screws now need to come out. I think, right, so these are all the same size except for one, which is this one here, which is the little version of these screws. So your silver ones go in your exterior, your black ones go in your interior, and the little one of the black ones goes in the very top corner here. These are round, I can't remember how big or small they are, so do with that what you will, because I don't need to take that out for this one, so that'll be another time. It's not relevant to this, so you don't need to Watch me do that, if you get me. <laughs> Originally, I was just going to show you the cable. But I got talking to one of my friends today about my idea that I had. And he he, he was like, nah, you should give it a good name. You know what I mean? Make it pop. It's a good, it's the first time it's been done, apparently. I, 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 I couldn't find anything. You couldn't find anything. Not for like a... Well, this isn't solder free, is it? But it's not a million miles away from it. Depending on what, I mean, you would need basic, like, it, tearing down the screen is the most trickiest thing, like I said, the skill of the soldering and stuff like that, it's about applying force and, the, you know, the right amount and stuff like that, if you can do it without, there we go. So, we can now move this out of the way, but, by going out too much, I don't want to knock it and lose all the buttons and everything, because that would be a really, really, really bad thing to do. <laughs> so, this is the board we're focusing on right now, this is the one we just took the bits off, so let's unravel everything we can unravel. Also, it turned out to not be the same... Speakers then, 
Yeah, so I've got an odd speaker somewhere, I don't have a 2DS. Right, so, right, so the back where we just desoldered it from, we're now flipping around to the front, where, as you can see here, I've got two connections to the one speaker connector, and I've got one connection to the where, the essential, the resistors between this, it's one of them hourglass ones. I'm going to be using a, an SMD one for the thing that I'm doing now, but the yeah, same principle works essentially. You could do exactly the same with this as you could do with that. So it's, it's a little bit easier for me to do with this now, if you got what I mean. It probably would have been easier to use one of them. So don't be thinking that that's less of a, oh, it'll do less of a job. If it's the 330 ohm resistor, it should be fine. And not only that, it probably would be easier for you to solve into place. So I'm just desoldering this here right now. But not really the pad up because that would be a pain in the butt. Right, so then we put it to one side. Because I'm not redoing it. <laughs> I will do it more tidied off. I'm going to do that. So I don't know why not. So if I'm not mistaken, right, so I need to pull this through first because these are twisted together to make one connection to simulate um, stereo speaker. <laughs> What's ironic is I think both speakers actually have a connection through the pinout on the actual connector, so I don't understand why it is only, you know, one speaker. It doesn't really make much sense, that, to be honest with you. There you go, that's that anyway. Uh, right, so I'm just gonna get a little bit of this sold off by dabbing my tip and just touching as little as point as they are. It. Right, so now pan of action all right so this will not turn on without it just won't turn on it'll i think click or something maybe like a snappy noise and then that's it ain't turning on simple as that but with a little bit of um insistence from my little mod maybe it will that's okay so place bets now do you think this worked the concept is sound, is it not? It's a really, really good idea, and I cannot see any reason why this would not work. I've done it correctly, other than if I've messed up a little bit in the back and that has bridged it or something, but I think we're good. From what I can see, there's no bridging involved. I can see a clear line between the two, so I think we're all good. And so let's get this in place. All right, yeah, yeah, so when the gold is coming at it, you want to go gold down to the board, if you get what I mean. So don't get getting confused because you know you gotta connect that one and then this one or whatever. Gold goes down towards it. You want the brown bit poking up. It's usually a bit of a pain in the butt to get in there to be honest with you. So I suggest you get like a firm grip on it. It needs to be quite sturdy going in. You know it goes in because it'll slide into place. And obviously, like I said, you don't want to break that clasp off because that is something. Well, if you obviously go back to the other way, and you prefer to do it that way, then that'd be fine. Obviously, break the clasp, you know what I mean? You might even be able to find a way to solve some speakers in there if you do it that way. You know, remove the cost totally without destroying the pins. I know that'll be something I'll be revisiting at some point. Alright, so that's in. That's fastened. Nice and tidy. So I'd have to figure out some way of hiding this, but I would assume somewhere like that maybe. Yeah, it would probably hide well, wouldn't it? Like that. Um, right, so what I'll do, I'll get a bit of tape on that. Uh, Ground in tape, ground in tape, ground in tape. Got some, there we go. It's bright green, oh, not bright green, but grass green. So I'll have to do for now. It's just to put this, so, you know, the metal bit on the actual ribbon cable, because I'm going to be pressing it against the board. I don't want it shining against the capacitor or something and, you know, causing, like, it might blow a fuse or something. We don't want that. Obviously, it's never good. So I'm going to do a little piece, literally a tiny little piece. In fact, it's not even that, not even that half, that'll be fine. What I'll do I'll probably use the other half for where I'm sticking it on the board, so it's got a little bit of extra safety. So what we'll do now, we'll get the board, uh, the bit that I've just soldered, and we'll put that up. <laughs> Sticking to wavy finger, wrong way. Uh -huh. uh, so we will do. We will just put one tiny little bit, like a lip of it, over the resistor, and then we'll just fold it over, and that cover the back and the front then. And look, we've got no bits to shot on. And then we've got these speakers bits here, which for now I will cover up with that little piece which I did there. <laughs> so I'm just going to cover that up to make it easier. Because I'll, 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 I'll use the other speaker, you know, so you can hear sound still comes through. 
that's going to cover that, is it? Mm. Right, it'll do for now, sort it. Right, so... Best way to do this. Hmm. Yeah, about there, I'd say. Would you agree? I'd agree. Foldage like that. So if we get a little bit more tape, there it is. A little slightly bigger piece now, just to give it some coverage. Well, I'm seriously crap with putting stuff down. All right, this has gone on a bit longer than I hoped. 40 minutes. <laughs> to be fair, I'd have maybe an hour or something, but I think I've undercut it a little bit, to be honest with you. All right, so. That should do the trick. So if I just do that, one sec, actually. Oh, we're good, nothing there, it's gonna show on. So if I do that, will that hold it in place? I think it will. So that'll be how you pin it down, or something a bit more tidy, but the green goes to the green, doesn't it? So, and obviously we still have space here for a speaker, because I have, I have, I have removed my game cart port. I wouldn't be the foam as well, I get in the way a little bit, so I can go. Well, I can try to make it go, but I really don't want to play, play ball, does it? Little bagger. Yeah, so, get off my finger, get off my finger. Do one, you. Alright, so now we put it back together again. So we pull this, where's this? This is this. Not 100% sure whether or not we're actually going to be able to fully assemble it, but. As long as I can show it power, I only gives a crap, eh? Alright, so the digitizer needs to go on this there, yeah, so let's maneuver you correctly, dude. Come on. There we go. Lovely jubbly. That went down nice. A lot more better than I thought it was, so we might actually be able to close it up. It's open, eh? So that doesn't affect the trigger. But only time will tell, eh? Right, so I better put the screws back in there. So I put the bits back in first of the screws. Screws, yeah, well, screws. There's a little one, those in the corner. Tiny, the black, little tiny things. Those of that one there. Well, I've got white rings as well. So any screw that goes on the board itself, the little black ones, I've got little white rings, so, like, not that there's anywhere else you can put it. <laughs> well, on this side, it helps, just say. The other side is on the where the, the buttons are, you know, on the power and the battery. That is um, totally marked. I mean, you've got some rings of some kind, but I don't understand the representation of them. So I won't pretend that I do. <laughs> but these white ones, these are good markers for keeping track of what screws go on the inside. I'm so blocking it in my hand, I really am, but this screwdriver is like, deciding to be magnetic one second, and then like, oh no, sorry, not magnetic now. It's like, you, uh, okay, you're magnetic, I'll, I'll, I'll use that then to keep the screen in place. Nope, okay, I'm not magnetic anymore. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, I'll just put it in place. Nope, I'm magnetic all of a sudden. Ah, oh, you bagger. How can you be both magnetic and not, not magnetic? What the hell? Go in the hole. Go in the hole. Go in the bleeding hole. There we go. It went in the hole. It listened. Thank God for that. All right, so... Get that out. That's just the digitizer. <clears throat> a little, I don't know if I said this before or not, but you know, the top screen, the lens from that is perfect to cover the bottom screen on this if you've got to take the digitizer out as well. You know, remove the touch functionality. Oh, you've lost touch functionality for whatever reason. I don't know what other ones that does it on. I know it's on the um, DS Lite as well. You can do it on that too. Seems to be exactly the same size. Put some sticky back tape or something, you know, to hold it down with or something. Alright, I'm talking crap now as I reassemble the last couple of ribbon cables and we attempt to throw it together. Did you know that I was going to be a pain in the butt getting that, this thing above connect, there is it, that one there. Oh my god. Such a pain in the butt. Right, where are you going in? There we go. So let's do this. And we'll clear for landing caption. Here comes the aeroplane. <laughs> Spit it out. There we go. And now this one. Put the finger up. Put it in place. Push it in. Make sure it's seated properly. 
quick little lever down and we're good to go. Get that one up, put it down this way. If you wonder why I'm using a pink uh, box, it's because I, I was trying to, you know, bring it up to camera level a little bit so it'd be easier to focus or whatever, but I'm not 100% sure that's actually even worked, to be honest with you. I've not been able to look at the camera once throughout the entirety of the video. But uh, it is what it is, isn't it? So hopefully you've enjoyed the video nevertheless. Right, so just because I don't know whether that's going to make it work or not, and obviously we need to test this, so I'm going to take it, give it as less, as little reason as possible to not turn on. So go in there, you. Come on to you, son. Get in there. Oh, bagger. A line. Click. That's the one. Yep, you know it. Uh, what's next? Right, so the back bit. Yes, right. So I remember there's a trick to this. And that is, ironically enough, I can't show you because <laughs> that's the trick to it. You need to cut, right? So, right, so that goes, it aligns like that, but from that way around, if you got know what I mean, you couldn't come in like that and do it. But if you do, that gives you like, the little bit of slackage on this to the point where you can connect it if you're very, very, very nimble. <laughs> big, big if. Uh, I feel like you got to blindly do it, you know, like a sense of touch. Sometimes it goes in straight away. Other times it takes hours. So this isn't one of them hours. Oh? No. Crap, not even in the right place there. Come on. Sit down, man. Be use the force, Chris. Use the force. You can do this. My fingers are too fat to fit in there. <laughs> you know, at the same time. Your chunky monkey fingers don't really help that much. Oh, my big stubby sausages, man. Come on! <sighs> right, let's give me a second and I will align this. I will use the force, goddammit. Go on, go on. Go on. Crap. <laughs> Oh my god, I used the force. Mmm. I'm gonna trip my chair right back up again. <laughs> Assume the position. Hopefully, that's not pulled it free or anything. I think we're all good. I this is it clicking into place. Got a little bit of sag saggage there, but. Nothing like oh, it's all good. It's all good. It's all good. A little bit there, but I think that might be taken up when we. Let's not press them. They still seem fully clickable. So let's get the screws back in then and give it a test. Whew. Right, so. Down to the final furlong now, people. Place bets now. If you're gambling people, now's the time to place them bets. <laughs> Banzai. Go on, do you reckon? I'm asking my wife now what she thinks. Do you reckon I'm. Do you reckon I've got, my genius idea was a goodie or a baddie? <laughs> I'm going to go with goodie. Yeah? Yep. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Oh, it shucks. <laughs> I'm blushing. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit of a sweaty one. <laughs> Literally, got this um, spotlight. It's like a. Kind of get you know um, industrial light thing. It's one of them kind of things. I modified it to be to kind of search light spotlight kind of things for my camera, which is at the moment literally running on fumes. These ones are. Oh, no. <laughs> I had to change I, this one here. I changed before I started filming. That's why it's nice and bright still. But thankfully I did that because otherwise it'd be quite dull this right now. Hopefully it's not dull as in the sense of like boring. <laughs> well, I've kept you entertained for the entirety of it. Now, that's it, we're done now. Uh, just throw it together and check. So, like I said, place your bets, people. Because within the next 20 seconds, you're going to know the answer. Can you hear the ticking of the clock? The room stands there. I know you hard tonight. I went to run the telephone. Alright, so, hoo -hoo -hoo -hoo, the moment of truth. But this entire video has led up to all 49 minutes, 50... No, it's going to be 50 minutes of this, right, innit? So, let's do this. Yeah.
Oh no. Oh no, what's something happened? Something happened. I think I turned it off before it turned on. Oh no. I can see it flicking. Oh no. Oh, so I need to re approach the drawing board for that one then. Oh. Crap. Oh man. Well, like I said, you read my BIOS, I'll show you the fails and the. the the, the things you get made, the, tri the trials and the tribulations and the wins and the loses. Getting a lot of the losses and a bit, a bit, a bit, quite a lot of the L's right now. <laughs> uh, that, sorry about that. Uh, I'll be back soon with some more stuff, hopefully, that you'll enjoy. <laughs> so, sorry about that, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.